we all have moments in life that shape and guide us to become the people that we are. One of those such moments for me was when I was eight. I walked through a fish tank. I know. Yes, I said that. A fish tank. Who does that, right? But of course, leave it to me to have to pull a rabbit out of my hat because I have to do something so crazy and so out there that it has to be a magical outcome, right? It was a hot summer day. My mother, my sister Kathy and I, were going to take the fish tank out back to scrub it. Well, as we were taking the fish tank out, the phone rang. So my mother says, I'm going to put this down on the floor in the hallway against the wall. You girls be careful. Well... Any eight-year-old that you know is completely in the present, and I completely forgot about it, came around the corner, and boom, went right through it. Confusion that followed, I could only remember flashes. Fall on the floor, and I see water rushing towards me. cut the arteries, nerves, and tendons in my foot and proceeded to bleed profusely. And I felt the pain and the agony. As I laid on the floor and bled, I had what you would call something close to a near-death experience. And I didn't realize the totality of that one incident would change my life forever. When I finally saw the surgeon and he got me on the operating table, he said, I, I want to see one more thing. So he flexed my foot and he said, I want you to try with all your might to keep your foot flexed. And I tried and I tried and I tried and I saw my foot just slowly fall down and my heart sank. I never felt more small, more at the mercy of the people around me, and so out of control in my life. Because I had cut the arteries, nerves, and tendons in my foot, and I had no motor function after the accident, I started the arduous process of rehabilitation, which was physical therapy five days a week. In the weeks to follow, I had many doctor visits. I had a great surgeon, but he was kind of a horse's ass. He was used to working with athletes, not eight-year-old children. And most eight-year-olds, if you know them, they take everything literally. So I'd go in one week and he'd tell me, you need to walk on that leg. And I'd go in the next week and he would say, you can't walk on that leg or you're gonna ruin everything. So it was very confusing to someone like me. And he was quite mean. He would say nasty mean things to me. He would yell at me. He would berate me and tell me I wasn't working hard enough or it wasn't good enough. It didn't work out. He'd blame me. And of course, I would lose the foot, would walk with limitations, and or I'd struggle with my foot all my life. I felt small, like I didn't have any power. There was no way that a little child like me was going to get anywhere and do anything right, especially according to this doctor. The constant beratement of the doctor started to weigh on me. I started to get very frustrated and that nothing I could do was working right. I began to not want to go to physical therapy and I was losing my motivation. So one day I went into this office visit with him, with my mother, and he says, all the work you've done is not good enough. You need to work harder. And I thought to myself, how could I work harder? I'm going five days a week. You know, you need to move that foot or you're going to lose it. You're going to lose that foot. You're going to lose it. And I freaked out. I thought, I'm going to lose my foot. Now, granted, I think it was a figure of speech, but the eight-year-old in me took it literally. And I looked at him and I felt this anger well up from the bubbly cauldrons from within, from the depths of my primal being. And I looked at him, and with the disdain, and with my finger pointing in his face, I said, you're a asshole. I'm going to walk on this foot, and I'm going to kick you in the ass with it. 
and the look on the doctor's face. Shocked, wide-eyed, white-faced, turned and looked to my mother like, help me? And my mother, I'll never forget the look on her face. It was a question of trying not to burst out into laughter, complete shock, complete embarrassment, and being proud of me all at one time. So with the help of my mother, we came up with an alternative plan. I went and played on the beach every day and walked in the heavy sand. I took a tap dancing class and I enjoyed my life as an eight year old. And I walked on that foot with no issues. And I continue to walk on my own two feet with no issues. Although I never did get the chance to kick him in the butt. So what's the point of me telling you a story about telling a doctor off when I was eight and walking through a fish tank? The point is this, no matter how small you feel in your life, no matter who the authority is over you, no matter how helpless you feel or how out of sorts, there is a strength in you that no one else can take and you can take control of your life and your situation and you can make an outcome for yourself that you choose. That has been a miracle in my life. I don't recommend anyone learning that miracle that way by walking through a fish tank. It's not fun, it's not fun, don't do it. <laughs> but if you can learn that lesson in life, you can certainly take control when things are hard. Blessings to you, I love, love, love you all. Mwah! So Isabel, Yes. So what's the meaning of life? 42. No. <laughs> Try again. What is the meaning of life? It's one thing. Yeah, what is that one thing? That's for you to figure out. I'm kidding. Uh, it's, it's about love. Showing up to love to everything and just the magic of it all and how everything works is so amazing. What am I about? Uh -huh. Oh lord. I am about love and peace and sensitivity and being one with the universe. No, I am like to play. I'm very playful. I don't take anything serious. I find humor in every single thing, which gets me into trouble because you don't laugh at funerals. People get pissed. And I'm all about love and showing up to people and seeing their authentic self and just kind of reveling in why they do things and how they think and what they feel. And, um, I'm about ukuleles. Just kind of showing up with love to everything. That's what I'm about. Oh, really? Yeah. Why are you looking so serious? <laughs> I'm very serious. You are very serious. I'm always serious. Yeah. Very serious kind of you're talking. You're talking about some serious shit. Some big shit. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and I don't have all the answers. I only have the answers for myself. And even then, that, that'll change. Okay. You passed. I did? Yay! <laughs> I got an A.